While at HTCE4 this year, we held a few clinics. The first one was about living in a trailer. In the afternoon, owner Bob Bozar talked about solar and battery systems. Let's listen in to what they have to share. Unfortunately, we did not record the entire talk, but here are some highlights of what we did catch. Well, lots of experience here to help answer questions. Um, Gary, um, just uh, we were out for um, almost three months. So we're flight attendants, and uh, yeah, next summer we're we're planning to live in our trailer and fly uh, our trips while heading from the east coast to the west coast. We're Steve and Michelle. And as Michelle said, we've lived in our, our camp or hiker trailer for about 10 months now. So the first question is, how do you pack for an extended trip? Um, you know, food, clothes. And I guess there's a couple kinds of extended trips, people who kind of stay in the same place and people who move around. Well, if anybody's seen any of our videos, you've <laughs> seen this sweatshirt. <laughs> That's how you pack. You pack as least, anything you can layer. Um, you know, a few t-shirts, um, wicking clothes help a lot because you, you can wash those out in a sink or anywhere you might happen to be. Um, and we'll even get that, get the underwear, lightweight washable underwear yes. is, is a must. <laughs> I brought, uh, some visuals <laughs> and because we were big backpackers before we decided to get the hiker. We have things that make things a lot easier. Like, this is a Sea to Summit pan, and it folds down. And we have lots of things that fold down. We are dish sink, um, colander, stuff like this with lids make packing easier, including, yeah, see, the, these make things a lot easier space-wise. And then, because we were backpackers, I have a professional 12-tray dehydrator, and I make my meals. So when we go home for a couple of weeks, that dehydrator is totally filled and on the whole time. Like, this is um, lentil soup, and this is chicken Cajun quinoa. So, and I even dehydrate my pasta so that, um, you don't have to use all that propane. You're just using it your, to boil your water to put over your pasta so that it can um, rehydrate quickly. And that really helps keep down the propane. All very good and, uh, and useful. Um, we had access to a laundry, so we tried to pack things that, you know, we could wash every week. And, and, and that's kind of a basic core. but. Uh, I, I also have a duffel bag for the colder, the exotics, you know, the colder weather clothes, the nicer weather clothes. I just broke into that yesterday to get a little bit warmer stuff because we've been out through the summer. I haven't needed the long sleeve items. And we will go home and we will sort our stuff and say, which <coughs> never going to take that again. Um, so it's just a process. So um, I honor those who like the quick dry. I, however, prefer natural fibers and um, you can do this wearing natural fibers. Um, I found an the hiker held an amazing amount of clothing, well, even just on my side. And um, if I did the Marie Kondo fold, I held a lot of, it held a lot of clothing. Yeah, the, um, uh, the, the fold and stack clothes survive traveling better than my technique, which is the roll and stuff. And those were all over the bed by the time we got here. <laughs> the next thing is shopping on the road. So when we went grocery shopping, we thought two or three days at a time, because we usually worked for two or three days. And we have a little fridge. Um, so that's how we shopped, and we also did not put food in the fridge that we normally do. A lot of veggies and fruit, well, veggies stayed in the back of the hiker. Um, our nut butters stayed in the back of the hiker instead of in the fridge. So if you've been watching our channel, you know how much I cook. I cook 
a lot <laughs> and I really enjoy it. Um, last year when we were living in it for three months, uh, we made it a point to make sure that we hit every farmer's market uh, on the weekends. So we uh, would look them up uh, when we got to where we were going, find out what time the farmer's market was and get our provisions for the entire week. But we also have a big fridge. Uh, we have an Ice Coast 60, uh, so it's a nice deep refrigerator on one side and a freezer on the other side. I would um, buy the organic, uh, already diced vegetables uh, in the little uh, freezer packs, and I would keep those in the freezer for when we would run out of vegetables, you know, at the end of the week, in case we would run out of something. I still had some vegetables that um, were easily accessible. You know, as far as seasonings go, um, I created a spice mix that allows me to just bring one jar of a seasoning, you know, spice mix, and it goes across the board with everything that I cook. So I have one jar. I don't have to bring everything. We also did a lot of farmer's market for our fresh vegetables and stuff. But, and we, we weren't refrigerating them until, uh, I think we were near Zion and my uh, lettuce that I had bought the day before, I went to get out of its bag and it was liquid because it was so hot. But basically we had a lot of salads because I already had my dehydrated meals. So, and all they would take would be water, or, uh, hot water or hot chicken broth to rehydrate. To let you know you can do it. You, ju you can just do it. Uh, it's fun. We also asked them about finding campsites. Michelle had some more show and tell for us. She shared her three favorite books she used for finding campsites. We will have these three books listed in the description below. We want to thank Bruce and Holly, Gary and Tosh, and Steve and Michelle for being on the panel and sharing their experience, and Liz for being the moderator. So I'll start with a few basics, and then we'll open it up to questions, and I think we'll learn from every question. So one thing to consider, the, the most basic thing when I talk to people who know nothing about it is, your battery stores energy, right? It's inefficient charging it, and whatever device you're using is inefficient using it. So it's kind of like energy in, energy out. You can't take more out than you put in, right? Um, batteries generally are rated by amp hours. 60 amp hours, 100 amp hours. Uh, so if we talk about a 100 amp hour battery, um, what does that mean? Like, well, what's that get me? Well, how long does it last? So 100 amp hour battery, if you multiply that by 12 volts, you have about 1,200 watts worth of energy you stored up. Now, a lot of the devices on our trailers, um, there's some cool Bluetooth things out there now. Your fridges will tell you how much energy you're consuming. Um, if you use a Gold Zero power center as your battery, it's really cool. If you, if you have something plugged into it, it says, hey, you're consuming X number of watts and you have 14.2 hours left. Really cool, kind of makes it simple for all of us that don't know. Um, so, if you have a 1200 watt battery, which is the 100 amp hour, and you have a device that's consuming 100 watts, theoretically, you're gonna get 10 hours, right? That never happens. Because the efficiency of solar panels, batteries, are all theoretical values. So I like to say, yeah, use a 70 to 80% rule you never want to be out off-grid and run out of power. Or realize that you're off-grid, you have your solar, it's like, great, I have a 100-watt panel, I'm consuming 100 watts, I'll be good indefinitely. Probably not going to work. Uh, your devices probably use a little more than you think. And for those of you with a solar panel, if, you've, if you have a, a meter on it or some type of a shunt that you're measuring it, you're going to realize you don't always get 100 watts from your panel. Um, so power in, power out, it's always theoretical values. Um, the other thing is on lithium batteries, 
You can drain lithium batteries down pretty extensively. That's one of the benefits of them. Um, some of the other AGM batteries and others, you get to a certain level, level and they're just going to stop discharging or discharging highly inefficiently. And when you buy a battery or goal zero or something, pay careful attention to the cycles and it generally gives you guidelines on how far you should take your battery down before you recharge it. We hope you enjoyed hearing part of what was shared at HTCE4. We'd love to hear what piece of advice you found most helpful. And like we always say, Get out, do some